Uh, thank you. I'm John Buck. I'm in the electrical engineering department, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, how you can use something I call muddy point videos to address student confusions. Um, this is National Poetry Month, so I'll be so bold as to mention, oh, I got Jen's attention instantly with that. Uh, one of my favorite Emily Dickinson uh, poems, if I can remember it offhand, is uh, Best witchcraft is geometry to magician's mind. His ordinary acts are feats to thinking of mankind, which, which I love for all kinds of reasons. But in that little couplet, Emily Dickinson gets at it, the difference in novice and expert learners. You know, probably 100 years before anyone ever studied the ways novices and experts learn differently. Uh, and, and so maybe this is, is some of the things we've done to help novices. Um, at the end of each, I, this is from my junior uh, required signals and systems class, a very mathematical class. Um, about 15 years ago, I started incorporating active and collaborative learning. So uh, I, I had to take some of the lecture material out. I decided it was better to teach a little less and make sure they really understood it. Some, all the same issues Neil was talking about, of getting them to do things. I think of it a lot, you know, when we teach music, art, or athletics, you don't watch the expert. You perform in front of them while they give you feedback. Or maybe they, you know, they do a short demo and then you do it. Why aren't we doing that in academia, right? It works and makes all kinds of sense. Another more pessimistic version is they get to make the first mistake while I, get, while I can watch and help them get sorted out. But it did mean I had a lot of this material from when I used to just lecture that I didn't cover. Or maybe I got to an office hours and maybe I had optional recitations. And I, I started also collecting these, these muddy point cards, one of my friends called them. At, every day at, after they'd finished their group work in class, as they're going, at, at the end of the day, we do this sort of half-page form, just four questions, optional. But one of the most ones is, what did, what's the main unanswered question you have from today? What did you find most confusing? And then what things were helpful? What things were least helpful? <clears throat> what I've started to do is, based on these, go back, find extra examples, or sometimes they just want the same example again. They say, can you record the example you did today so I can watch it? But, but based on that, I go make a Khan Academy-style video uh, of, of sort of thinking out loud while I solve the problem. And I went through a, a couple iterations, and this was certainly influenced by uh, Innovation Hub, had, had an a episode where they interviewed Sal Khan about why he did this. And then just in the last few months, there was a study came out from edX uh, that looked at, I think it was over 100,000 students interacting with videos to find out what provoked the highest engagement. And they found these sort of narrated uh, chalkboard type talks generally had better engagement than recording a lecture or even the talking head type things or PowerPoint shows. Uh, but it, I, I like Sal Khan's intuition was, was it's like sitting next to someone with a piece of paper explaining things to you. And I find that works really well when I can get students in office hours. So I wanted to do that. And, and it wasn't a whole lot of overhead to do it. I, I have a whiteboard program. The one I use is Sankore. Um, Sal Khan on his uh, frequently asked questions mentions the one he uses in Windows. I don't remember for sure what it is. Uh, a bamboo tablet, so a USB thing to write because engineering is all equations, so you don't really want to be typing these things. A, a basic headset like this with USB one, you can get fancier, but this, this seems to produce well. Nobody's, of all the things they've complained about in the video, audio quality has never been, been one of them yet. Uh, and then TechSmith Relay, it used to be Camtasia, and the folks here in instructional development uh, helped me get started with that. I think everybody in ID has helped me at some point. Uh, Andrew got me, was the one who got, Andrew Heinold got me started, but Damon and Tracy, and, and I, I, I'm sure I could think of something they've all helped me with. They're a huge resource if you're going to go in this direction. Um, and I have another friend who started doing this in her class at another university. She really likes Doodlecast for the iPad, that she can do that pretty much anywhere. It, it costs a little money, but not much. Um, and then you put the video up on YouTube. And, and Damon, is there a way I can use it? Oh, I'm find the browser. I was going to show you just a quick snippet. Okay, we get here. So this is an example from one of my videos with no, oh. no. Well, the audio isn't coming through. So anyhow, but, but it's basically me thinking out loud, explaining what I'm doing. It gives them the chance to see not just a finished diagram, but like Khan Academy, they see things evolve as it, as it happens. Uh, I try to use color, partly nudged and mocked by my artist wife, that I, everything I do is in black and white. I started trying to find things. And, and again, just recently, uh, there was a paper in IEEE Education, uh, Transactions on Education came out two months ago, no, three months ago, uh, by Guo, uh, no, this was Ricebein and others, showing that they went through a whole system where they color-coded the uh, 
a circuits class. So every resistance was blue, every voltage was green, I forget exactly. But they found that was a huge help with novice learners that they didn't have to develop enough context to understand what these things were. The color just told them what these things were and provided all these sanity checks of if you're doing Ohm's law in this form, it should be red on the top and blue underneath and things like that. So I've tried to bring some of that color in and, and that makes it it's very helpful too. Let me uh, hop back. So you can go find these uh, on your own. Get back into from the current slide. So we put all these up, and then you know the question is, well, that's very entertaining activity for me. Does it actually help the students? Uh, so the first time I did this was in, in fall of 2013. Uh, I made about 20 videos, uh, and then I added at the end of this, I had optional questions, but pretty much everyone did them at the end of semester student evals. Uh, 50 out of 50, it was a five point Likert scale. 50 out of 54 said so the videos were helpful or very helpful. 30 out of 54 watched most or all. Uh, and the great thing is Google Analytics, you can give you a peek at this. You can't tell Google, you know, tell me all the, we're not to the point you can't say, show me all the UMass students viewing habits. But I figured a good proxy was to say, show me all the views during the semester from Massachusetts, which would give me a good sense. Uh, I had over 1,000 views for over 7,000 minutes the first time I did it. So that's, uh, that averages out to about 110 minutes per student of additional instruction. So that's almost another week of class in terms of, of interaction with them. Uh, and, and I think that's a pretty good indication because that was the first term I did it, so I don't think there was other people watching them. You know, they, they weren't publicized. After it seemed to go well, I talked about it with, with some of my friends uh, and academic siblings, and to my surprise, it got a lot of, a lot of views from elsewhere. Uh, this past fall, it went up even more at 2,000 views for 12,000 minutes, so that's getting to be almost three hours of, of additional instruction per, per student with that. Uh, and again, these are, some of them are, are the lecture type stuff like Neil and Sarah have done. More of them tend to be just extra examples um, and, and, and things like that. Or sometimes if a lot of people get a homework problem wrong, I'll do it on, uh, uh, give them sort of video solutions for that. Uh, and, and the analytics confirm that. This is, is from the most recent semester. You can see the weekly homework signal in there. And you know, it just goes along. Here's the first one going down. Here's the next third. Oh, first exam, it goes back up, down, down, down. Second exam, down. Thanksgiving and the final. So you can, you can almost see the semester in the, in the views for Massachusetts during those three months. Um, the thing I didn't expect, and I'm hoping, well, more than I expected, I maybe hoped for, uh, is I'm not teaching the course of this term and there were 2,000 views in the last month on, my, on the videos for this class for, for hours from all over India, uh, a lot of, and Sweden. And some of those I can maybe put a friend of a friend to, depending on which university they're coming from or something like that. Uh, but I'm kind of hoping, and, and my friend at George Mason who does the same, uh, we both started using splash pages where we end, trying to end the video with a splash page that says, if you're interested in coming here for grad school, here's, <laughs> here's the URL for applying. So maybe we can use this as, as a way to, to increase grad enrollments in, in some of the programs uh, as well. So I'll, I think that's my time. I'll, I'll stop there and, and hand out Oksana.